So, Chris Heron, thanks for joining me today for this interview. No worries. So, Chris, you're an improvement chain fielder, but you are also the Category 3 owner for uh, TV and Q. Yes, that's correct. Excellent. So, I hope you don't mind. I can ask you a few <coughs> questions. Um, could you tell us who are your stakeholders? So, for anything to do with engineers, um, that goes to John McKinnon under the TV category. And anything to do with um, Sky Q content, TV content, or knowledge content around TV or Q, or even Sky Q apps, so like Netflix or Sky Go, mm -hmm. that goes by John McKinnon's name. Okay, excellent, thank you. So, Tell me, Chris, what was it like speaking with your stakeholders for the first time? So the first time was quite nerve-wracking because they're, they're both product owners. So John McKenzie has a wide spanning, I can never remember his actual title because yeah. it's changed. <laughs> He's got such a wide spanning department on what he owns to product. So it kind of felt intimidating at first because you realize how far up he is compared to yourself. And it was the same with John McKinnon because he's in charge of a team and home service that deal with the engineers and everything to do with it. So it is intimidating at first, but I think you just realize that people at the end of the day and you realize they like things that you might like or, or they're nice or have banter. So you kind of get over that um, once you start getting to know them. It's just about kind of overcoming that as well, that yeah. kind of fear that they're higher up and just think, now they're a person, they put the trousers on the same way you do every morning. So human. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with that. Thank you. Cool. So can you tell us a little bit about um, how the relationship is now with the stakeholders? Uh, you know, obviously now things are established. How are things? It's really good. We've worked similar um, with both Johns in TV and Q. Um, so an example with John McKenzie for anything Q related or TV content, as I said, you could pretty much just take most things to him. So if it's an idea generally is quite receptive of having ideas just brought by him. He will tell you the reason why we can't have something or the reason behind like if it's compliance based. Or even talk about how he does like the idea and he would love to take it on but they can't. And then there's even ideas that he does take away and think that's a brilliant idea, let's do it. We are currently working on other things so it might not come for a while. So he's generally good with just bringing ideas by him. Brilliant. In terms of like everything else, he's generally just great with giving knowledge so if we just have a question based on a sticking point like if me and Adam aren't 100% sure something's part of the process and we can't find it he's fine just finding that for us even telling us right off the bat so really receptive about those kind of information and engaging in it and John McKinnon is very similar where you can just basically go and ask him a question anytime it doesn't even have to be around the call when we do the calls it could just be any time of the week and they'll answer both answer this question. John McKinnon, we do have a bit more like we might need examples for if it comes to like, a specific technical issue. We might need to get examples to send away to with because we can't just do a change off the back of that. We we'll need to investigate first. But as I say, I can generally bring stuff to him without examples at the start. And he'll be like, cool, that's an issue I know of. Let's yeah. take it away or that's not something I've heard of. Can I get you to find me some examples? And then we can investigate that. So, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, it sounds like you've got really great relationships with both of the stakeholders. Um, is there anything that you can share with us as to how you're able to keep up that engagement with the stakeholder and, and keep that relationship as it is? Well, it's kind of bringing in like how we can benefit them rather than them just benefit us. So what we can do to help them make their lives easier and even get information across. So one thing Adam in particular does is a lot of the information that John's, both of John's, so give us. So it needs to be either given out to the operations or it needs to be given out to our department. We'll be that kind of call. So Adam will send out briefs to our department to talk about what's coming, what changes are happening, uh, how that impacts the floor. Other things that we kind of offer our services to them about is being the eyes and ears, because with John, not so much, because John, uh, John McKenzie, sorry, because he's like a massive influence so on chat, so he will see what people are saying. Um, with John McKinnon, for example, his team's purely around engineers and operations are not ignored, but they're not their priority. So we're used as a kind of 
I am inside the advisor, so what we're hearing, what the yeah. operators are saying are problems. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have that where we give them our service of being in this great position we are with the operation and keeping these things in. So it's kind of, we're there to help them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if they have a message or they want to understand what's happening or even if they're about to release something and then they're like, oh, we need to hear how it's received, we'll help them out with that, kind of go around seeing what we hear, mm -hmm. feeding that back to them. Yeah, cool. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Um, what I'd really like to ask you is, has there ever been a time where you've maybe lost some of the engagement with uh, either one or both of the stakeholders? Um, and how did you overcome that? I don't think we've ever had disengagement with either of them. We've been quite lucky because they're very mm -hmm. on board with sticking points. Like They understand that the ideas being presented to them or the issues are important. Um, but We've never really had much disengagement with them at all, really. So I couldn't really give an example <laughs> on that, unfortunately. No, well, that's good to hear, anyway. Um, and that's that's just as useful uh, information for us. So thank you. It's uh, just we just keep making sure that we're engaging them all the time. That we're bringing them, not bringing them the same point mm -hmm. over and over, or asking them the same questions. We're making sure that we've got all of our answers that we've had written down. Mm -hmm. or somewhere where we can reference them back rather than just constantly going back well, I know we spoke to you two weeks ago about this but could you give us the answer again because that just disengages them yeah. so we just make sure that we're never asking them the same question repeatedly if we already have the answer making sure that we're always there to help them because they're always there to help us absolutely I think over time you obviously can put yourself into the shoes of a stakeholder you come to learn what they want to hear about and yeah. what they won't want to hear about Obviously, it gets easier. Yeah, exactly. uh, so that's fine. Good. Um, cool. So that's that's pretty much all the questions. But is there any other um, tips or tricks that you feel like you'd want to share with us, um, especially for those other Catley owners that want to be able to engage better with their stakeholders? I think it's just determining what they're looking for from it. Like mm -hmm. that's kind of first thing you need to really think about is how this benefits them, but how it also benefits us at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the day. We can't just expect to go in with, oh, you're the stakeholder, therefore give me all these answers. You need yeah. to be able to figure out how you can benefit them. It's, I know sometimes you do get points where you feel like, oh, I, why do I have to take that by, yeah. by my stakeholder? <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's an idea. So sometimes, I know we're really lucky with both the Johns where they're very receptive about any idea given by them. But I think it's just also realizing that they're just, just people. Absolutely. So Definitely. ask them. Mm -hmm. It's the key point there, really, isn't it? Yeah. Just remember that they are people. Um, cool. Excellent. Well, um, thank you very much for joining us, Chris. It's, um, it's been really valuable just hearing what you have to say about your experience with stakeholders. Um, and I hope viewers watching um, can take something away from that. So thank you. Thank you.